This is hot off the press. Number one, 78 is history. Next, let's jump right into the fact that I have a date tomorrow with somebody new. I don't know how it happened, but it did. I think this guy is off his rocker also, and I'll tell you why. I spoke to him on the phone for an hour, okay? He's from New Jersey, big surprise. He has a house and a pool table. Not the best pool table. He thinks it's like such a high-end table. It's not Brunswick. It's not a diamond. It's not an, an all housen. It's not like... But he thinks it's like the best thing. He even has his name engraved on it. All right, whatever. My table is just as good. Then he says to me, um, you're really my type. I definitely want to meet you. Are you free tonight or tomorrow? I'll, I don't mind driving from New Jersey. I gave this guy a huge lecture about me ever driving to New Jersey. Told him right away, don't even consider seeing me if that's ever going to come up because I am petrified to drive in New Jersey. I said, now, as far as driving in Manhattan, I'm like a cabbie. But watch out. I can park my car anywhere. I can cut anybody off. But that's street driving, and that's a whole different style of driving. That's concrete jungle driving. I don't know from highways and byways. That's not for me. That kind of driving is out. So I let him know, I don't drive to Jersey. Oh, that's okay. I don't mind. I'm only 45 minutes away. 45 minutes? That's far, okay? That's far. But to him, no big deal. Now, we'll see how long that lasts. Then he goes off into a whole tirade that he's looking for a partner. He's been um, retired for 12 years. He looks like he's, he said he's 67. That's a huge lie. This guy is definitely at least 69, 70 years old. It's just obvious. He has one daughter, 36 years old. I mean, I'm just telling you, I know this guy is older than 67 years old. Hands down. Now, he looks nice looking. I'm not going to say he's like the 71 year old because he looked like a movie actor. I mean, that was something else in looks. That was like a 10. This guy, he looks like decent. He's presentable. He said he looks better in person. Okay. He is in pretty good shape. He's six foot two. That's tall. The 71 year old was six foot one. That was too tall for me. And then seven, eight years old, who was starting to get stoop, stooping a little bit like, eh. anyway, he was six foot one, but shrinking ever so quickly. And, you know, this guy asked me, like, um, do I go to the gym? I said, the gym? That's the most boring place in the world as far as I'm concerned. Unless I'm looking for my next boyfriend, then I might go to the gym because maybe I'll meet somebody there. But other than that, I, don't, I have no thoughts of going to the gym. I mean, I guess I could, like, once a month. So he's like, oh, then what kind of figure do you have? Like, do you have, like, a, like are you heavy? Because, you know, sometimes that happens. You know, these men are so worried about your body. I mean, like, the nerve, you know? Like, they're looking for Bridget Bardell model material here. So anyway, I showed him a picture. Um, so he goes, oh, he says, how do you have, like, such a good, good figure? I'm like to myself, it's not that good. You, you always see me like with long sleeves, covered up, you know, it's all encased, you know, spandex pulls you in. But I said, well, you know, I don't know what to tell you. You know, it is what it is. So he says, oh, no, that's good. That's good. So then he says, well, I just want you to know that I don't want to start dating you unless you're going to be like either living with me or getting married because I have a very big house and you'll have your own bathroom and, and your own private space. And I have the pool table so you can knock yourself out. And, um, you know, I'll buy you stuff. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I want to travel. I like to go to Vegas. I like to go to the Caribbean. I like to go to all these islands. I like to go here. I need a partner. I need someone to come with me. I have a boat. Um, I said, oh, do you drive the boat? No, I hire a captain. And I'm like, how much money does this guy have? Not that I care. Trust me. When you marry for money, you earn every penny. I'm not even looking for that. So he's going on and on about this and that. I said, well, what did you used to do for a living? Oh, I worked on Wall Street and then I did something else and all that. Blah, blah. So um, he said, how come you clicked on me? Like, he's such a superstar. 
How could I resist? Why did you click on me? I'm just wondering. Oh my God, if that's not a narcissist, I don't know what is. So there was a picture of him and his daughter and his daughter really looks like a very nice person. She just gave a very good vibe. And that is one of the reasons why I clicked. They said, this guy's daughter seems so like um, self-effacing, just something about her. Because you know, when you go out with a guy, you're going out with his whole family, the whole mishpucha, the whole family, that's, you know, a package deal. So I said, oh, you know, I thought your daughter looked like so um, impressive. I was impressed with her demeanor. Oh, my daughter. He says, oh, I said, well, you posted the picture of you and your daughter. So he says, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she told me to post that. In fact, she's the one who got me on the website, the, uh, the Bumble. Um, she's the one who set up the whole thing. I said, oh, you see, she's such a good daughter. Yeah, she's great. She's not married. You know, I said to myself, well, isn't she the smart one? And um, on and on and on and on. You know, he did ask me questions about myself, which he gets credit for. He's a pretty decent conversationalist. Um, and we talked about Brooklyn. We're both from Bensonhurst and, and all of this and how much he um, does not like Staten Island and yada yada and just putting down Staten Island and like Jersey is so fantastic. All right, if you say so. Um, he goes on and on how if I'm not ready to either live with him or get married, then yeah, he doesn't want to like embark on anything because that's his agenda. He said, you know, if everything works out and we fall in love and we date for a year, you know, I want like a serious commitment. I want a partner and this and that. And if, if you don't want to live with me, no problem. Then we'll get married. I'm like saying to myself, this is a ridiculous conversation. Number one, I may not have a lot of money, but I certainly have enough to support myself and buy myself a few things here and there, you know. I mean, seriously, I get up when I want, I sleep when I want, I eat when I want when I want it, I go out when I want. If I want to take a walk at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'll take a walk at 2 o'clock in the morning. If I want to go over my friend's house at 4 o'clock in the morning, I'll go over my friend's house at 4 o'clock in the morning. If I don't want to eat that day, I'm not going to eat that day. If I want to sleep the whole day, I'll sleep the whole day. If I want to watch TV nonstop, I'll do that till 5 o'clock in the morning. And guess what? No one is here in my duplex condominium telling me what to do. And certainly no one is demanding any sex from me because what if I'm not in the mood, okay? I don't know what this guy's testosterone level is, but I'm going to find out what's going on there. I mean, can you imagine? Just imagine now. I'm married to this guy. Michelle, I can't believe you're still asleep. It's 11 o'clock already. When are you going to get up? I mean, like, chop, chop. Could you imagine? Gee, I mean, just shoot me. Oh, Michelle. Oh, let, we got to go to Costco. We got to get some groceries for the house. Something I detest. Okay. Detest. Grocery shopping? Anything like that? No. Oh, well, you know, we got to do the laundry. It's piling up. I'm like, what? piling up? Yeah, because there's two people now. When I have myself just to worry about with laundry, I just give it in. What do I care? I mean, this changes everything. Just the thoughts. Oh, and what about money? Oh, my God, I can't believe you bought another wig. You have like 100 wigs. You mean to tell me you needed another wig? Oh, and another pair of shoes? I thought you had 500 dresses. We're going shopping again? I mean, this just, like, drives me crazy. Uh, when I was married, I used to put whatever I bought in my the trunk of my car and then sneak it in the house when my husband was sleeping. That was husband number two. Because he couldn't fathom why I needed all this stuff. And then, of course, I'll have to sign a prenup because he'll want the house to go to the daughter. And rightfully so. That's where it should go. I know someone that put their wife on the deed and I don't know what happened. They had a will where the house gets split in half. In other words, half the house goes to the daughter. The other half goes to the wife. And, you know, when the guy dies, that's what happens. Meanwhile, that's not even good because I don't even want the house. Here we go with the taxes, the maintenance, the upkeep, the landscaping, something always breaking, the plumbing. I mean, like, just when you think about it. I mean, I don't have any of that nonsense now. I mean, I'm living in a condominium. They need a new roof, they do a new roof. There's a snow to shovel, so they come, they shovel the snow. I mean, what am I responsible for? Yeah, okay, there could be a leak. That did cost me almost two grand. But that happened once. 
I mean, it's not like there's a constant, you know. I mean, yeah, everything might be okay when the guy is alive. Okay, so let's say you do all these financial papers and, you know, you make sure that everything is like covered, every I and this and that. And let's say the daughter is a saint and everything is good. Okay, then let's say she marries some Mama Luke and now he gets involved and now there's trouble. Things can change on a dime. So there you go. You're dealing with all these variables. And why would I want to do that at this age? Why? Okay. So I just said to myself, this getting married at this stage, I don't see any advantage at all. I mean, he'll probably get sick and I'll have to take care of him. Well, that wouldn't work. Even if the guy has money. Even if he puts me in the will where I'll get money. I mean, seriously, how much money do I need? Where am I going? I am going to Barcelona in October with my girlfriend. But, you know, I can afford to do that. I don't need this guy to show up me around the world. The guy talks to me like I haven't been anywhere in my life. Oh, did you go here? Did you go there? Well, no. I don't care for these Caribbean islands anyway. That's not my thing. I don't like to walk around the beach all the time. I can see the beach, I'm there for an hour, then I'm ready to go, done. I can see this guy's gonna be like a pest. He's the type that's gonna call me every day. What are you doing? Oh, uh, can we go out? Can we this, can we that? I'm like, you know, I'm not up for all this activity. I lead a very introverted type of lifestyle, which I have designed to my own comfort level. Now, I don't think this guy is a match anyway, because he's too much of a let's go here, there, let's go, let's go to the beach, let's this, let's, I could just see that he's going to want to have a lot of sex. I mean, how much sex do you think I want to have at this age? Once a week? Tops. Not going to be any more activity than that. I don't see why this guy said to me, well, I don't want to be in a situation where um, I'm seeing somebody and they're in their house and then I stay in my house and then we get together like once a week. To me, that's what I want. That's ideal. That's perfect. Go live your life. Go do what you got to do and I'll live mine and that'll be great. This guy has me already married and moving into his house. Didn't even meet me yet. Crazy. So tomorrow I'm meeting him at 1400 hours and you never guess the restaurant I chose. Think about it. What restaurant did I choose? Because if you know me, then you'll know I picked the same seafood restaurant that's very expensive, Cole's Dockside, that I just went with 78-year-old Mama Luke. And I can't wait to take pictures of the food that I'm going to post and splatter all over Facebook. That'll be good. Now this guy is not on Facebook which I'm starting to think this isn't such a bad thing because he's not going to know anything that I post. He has no idea about the wigs. That's another thing. He has no idea I wear wigs. He hasn't got a clue. He should though, because on one of the photos that I have, I think I'm holding a wig, but you know, whatever. I couldn't care less. Let him figure it out when he sees me with different hair. And uh, that's the story. Let's figure out what we're going to do here with this, I think because it's aesthetica, it's like iron. So we'll just spray some water. We're just going to spray some water here on this wig. Nothing other than that. It doesn't need anything else. There's water in here. This is not for breeze in here. And I'm just going to get this going. This is such an affordable wig. I think the best way to deal with this is with these bendable rods.
Okay, so that's basically the story. I'm going to use the little NB Renew and Repair. You can use anything, I don't care. Just get some silicone, something or other. So you're just going to do this in sections. You have to roll it you have to roll it up while it's hot. Get it while it's hot. Okay. If not, forget it. And it has to stay overnight. Don't even think about just taking it out. I was gonna use you know, I was gonna use smaller ones. I don't know why I changed my mind. So don't think you just have to shampoo your wig to get it clean. That's that's a misnomer. Whoever said that doesn't know what they're talking about. Like unless you are working in the coal mine with your wig on. As crazy as this looks, it's going to work. And I'm just leaving it overnight. I'm not doing anything with it. So that concludes our evening. I'm so glad that you spent this time with me. I'll see you tomorrow for an update after my dates.